Hello, my pretty petunias and my handsome hunk of hams. How are you today? I am great. I am going to try something new. Now, I have not seen this done with acrylic. And some may say it's just a negative pour, negative space pour. But to me, I think there's a little bit of technique involved here and I'm hoping to get a new trend going to get some people jumping on the bandwagon and trying this out because I did it with resin with my challenge with Michael Grimm from MKL Art and I absolutely loved it. So everybody knows what a river table is and if you don't I'll tell you right now go google them or search for them on YouTube. A river table is a table that has been split in half and they pour resin down the center. They make a big mold, a slab. Somehow they, they put the two pieces of wood inside of this big slab and then they pour resin in the middle and it is gorgeous. The thing is with those, what catches your eyes with those is the resin always has like one striking color that pops through and the table is almost as beautiful, the wood part, as the resin part. So what I'm trying to accomplish with this hashtag river pour is I'm trying to show you that the negative space on this painting is going to be just as important and eye-catching as the center going through. Now, the first thing that you want to do is you want to, with a pencil or something, draw in the shape of your center. I'm going to call it a river. I Now, you don't have to use watercolors. It's just the shape of a river. So for me, I am going to just take this white Prismacolor pencil and kind of sketch a center out here where I want to pour my bright colors. Or not my bright colors, my colors in general. Outsides are going to be black, okay? And you can do whatever shape you want. You could do a pond in the center of the canvas. But as I said, this doesn't have to be watercolors. Mine is not going to be watercolors. Now over here, I'd much rather have it go up a little bit. Maybe go up and then come down a little bit like this. Okay. So there is my center. So the way I want this to go is I want to use three somewhat tame colors, we'll call them, and then one color that really, really pops. So for the tame colors, I will show you them here. Now, these are acrylic, not resin. This one is called burgundy and this is by blick art it's just your typical burgundy color none of these are metallics um so that's the burgundy then i have one that's called flesh by master's touch here it is mixed up okay and then I have Van Dyke Brown from Golden. All right. And then I have, now this is my bright, vibrant color. I absolutely love this brand of paint. 
I'm going to try to link this with a few other uh, colors in the box below. This is the most beautiful violet I have ever seen. I got this at Blick. And trust me when I say the camera is not doing it justice. It is gorgeous. And then I'm going to use a gold and my gold is going to be, I'm sorry, I lied, copper, not gold. And it's going to be golden. Okay. Now, how did I mix my paints? My paints are all mixed with Floetrol and water. That is it except for one and I will explain that in a minute so I put into these cups a teaspoon worth of paint I put in nine milliliters of Floetrol I'm sorry I'm trying to squeeze my pipette out here so it doesn't drip I filled this up three times, so that's nine milliliters of Floetrol and a couple of drips of water to get it to a nice consistency, okay? Now, for the black, I'm using Liquitex Black, but I've made my black a little bit thicker than the rest of the colors because what I want to try to accomplish, like I did with the resin, is I want to do the center and then when I'm done with the center I want to add the black and just bring it up to the line and I don't want the colors to move too much so I'm hoping with the black being thicker than the rest of the colors that they won't it'll almost act like a barricade it's not much thicker it's probably the consistency of regular flip cup or dirty pours versus these which are mixed in between a Dutch pour thickness and a the black the flip cup style so now none of them have silicone in them the only one that does have silicone is the one that's going to be laid down on the bottom and that is the violet I put three drops of silicone in here it's been sitting for a while I'm gonna put one more drop I'm using spot on treadmill belt silicone so I just put one more drop in there now here is my hope my hope is and if you didn't watch the video I did this with resin I'm going to link it in the box below and up in the corner here you're gonna see the little eye pop up if you click on it it'll take you to the video up in the right hand corner look now and oh I just lost my train of thought <laughs> sorry my CRS syndrome is kicking in again for those of you that don't know what that is can't remember shit because I'm old so anyway what I'm hoping will happen is I'm going to pour this down first spread it out up to my white lines and then I'm going to come in with my other colors and do little puddle pours and then move it a little bit with some heat somehow or with a stick. I'll figure that out when I get there. And my hope is, is that the silicone in this will push the colors that I pour on top away and this will pop through in random places, okay? And then once I get done with the center, I will do the outsides. So, as I said, all my paints were mixed with full trial and water, no silicone except for the violet, and I put in four drops in each color of GAC 800. This helps with your paint not cracking, especially in the case like this where my black is thicker than the other colors. I want to use that because that's one of the main causes of cracking is the paints are different consistencies and they dry faster than others. Some colors dry faster than others. Okay, so here we go. Let's get this new trend going, guys. Try this out. Start hashtagging it. If you're on YouTube, try it out. 
title river pour on there. Let's get a new trend going, shall we? Let's see if it works first. I know it works with resin. Let's see if we can get it to work with this. Now I'm working on a 12 by 12 canvas, which by the way, very important news. This was a cheapo canvas. I found this stuff and I'm definitely going to put it in my Amazon shop. It's by Masterpiece. It's called Tighten Up Canvas Retentioner. I sprayed this stuff on the back. I followed the directions. I lightly misted the back and then used a paintbrush to kind of spread it out. Well, let me tell you something, guys. Listen to this. That is a tight canvas. This stuff, I could not believe how good it worked. Here is another one. Very, very tight. And it only took a couple of short bursts of that stuff. So I'm going to link that below. Especially if you want to work on cheaper canvases and use resin, that is a lifesaver. Not a lifesaver, but it saves me a lot of heartache. You don't have to prep your canvases and put layers and layers of crap on them just to get it to hold a little bit of resin. All right, so enough jibber jabbering. Let me pour down this pink or violet. Let me be politically correct. It's violet, Tammy. And I have to be careful because I do not have my painting balanced. And that is because of having to use my finger in a minute to move this around. So I didn't want to um, have it propped up on anything so it would be kind of a pain. So use up all this pink. I just have to be careful that it doesn't start rolling towards one side because I know my table is off. All right, so now I'm going to take my stick and try to spread this out the best that I can right up to those lines. It's okay if a little bit of the canvas shows through because you're going to have other colors going on top of this. Something like this, your fingers may work better. matter of fact before I make a mess let me just try that I really really hope this works Take your time. There is no rush, especially with something like this. It's acrylic paint. This can be a lot of fun for you. Okay. All right. So now here is the technique that I did with the resin. I made little puddle pours leaving some of that pink to show in between. So I'm going to start with the burgundy. Nope, sorry, Van Dyke Brown. And you want to do little puddles, especially if you're working on a small canvas like I am, because they spread out really quick once you start adding colors on them. And 
and they don't have to be perfect. Put one more here. Then I'm going to come in with the flesh color. Then I'll use the copper. Actually, yep. And with the copper, I'm going to kind of just weave it around through like this. Just take a look. Little bit more here okay and then the burgundy will be the last one here and this one I'm gonna pour on heavy this copper is making like little flowers they look like in the paint really cool the effect I'm getting right now just kind of do what you want just make sure that some of that pink is showing through weave it and then maybe I'll add a little more brown weave that through there too okay that's it so now the hard part i need to figure out how to move this without it going all over the place so let's try Let me try my heat gun on low. Not sure if it'll move it or not. Let's see. No. Let's try high. And I'm going to put the air on cool. My heat gun, I love this heat gun. It comes with attachments. I have it in my Amazon shop. You could turn it down to where it's blowing cool air. But it's still not strong enough, so it's gonna have to be blow dryer. You're gonna have to go with the blow dryer. So I think I'm gonna use old demon dryer for this. Not the new one that I got because 
better control with this when I'm used to it. Kind of lost my shape there, but well, let's keep going. Okay, let's try to blow it with a straw, maybe. A little paper straw here. This is gorgeous right here. Folks, I am freaking loving that. This color combination is gorgeous. Wow. Now, though, I have to figure out how to get this kind of in shape a little bit. I don't know if I'll... Oh, wait, I know what I could do. I can inject some of my black. So I'm gonna get a syringe for this. Maybe, maybe baby. All right, I'm gonna suck up some of my black. And then let's see if this allows me to shape it a little bit. Yep. Yes, ma'am. And sir, yes, yes. Look at that. It does allow. Now I am freaking excited. Wow. Okay, I'm going to do that to the other side. Cannot wait to give you a close-up of this. I do want to move kind of fast, though, because my table is off, as I said. As I said, I hope you guys really give this a try. I have a Facebook group with Lisa Wyatt Art. It's called United We Pour with Tammy and Lisa. If you do try this technique, please go to that group, join. Even if you don't try it, join. It's a fun group with a lot of amazing people. But if you do try it, I think I'm going to put a post up for everyone to share their images. All right, so I emptied my syringe. And now what I want to do is I need to get this into a flat area and move you guys. So let me pause you, set this up, and I'll be right back. 
Okay, so I have you set up on the ground. It's nice and flat there. So now all I'm going to do is take my black and cover my ends. It's as simple as that. I'm not going to go right up to that black line I created with the needle. I'm going to give this some room with the syringe I made. I'm going to give this some room to spread out because I don't want it to really push that too much. I don't want to leave that area alone. So I'm going to take a stick. I'm going to spread it out this end first. Or this area, I should say. Get my sides. You guys, this is gorgeous. I'm sorry for the shadows. It's late at night. And it's the best I could do right now. And because of where I have this, it's going to barely move at all. So it's going to dry pretty much as you see it. So now here is the important part. Take the black and lightly touch it up to that other black. Because you do not want it moving it too much. Just a thin, thin line. Just like that. Be patient, even drag some of this down if you want, this black. Whoops, don't do that though. <laughs> ah, I'll have to cover that up. Maybe that's not the smartest thing to do, huh? Just don't grab that color that's there. Listen, I'm having fat girl problems right now. I'm bending over trying to do this. I can't even breathe. Woo. My face is probably as red as a plum. <laughs> uh. All right. So that side's good. Except for my boo-boo there. Try to push it up there. There we go. Right? I'm going to try to smooth it out a little bit, which is not very easy to do with the stick. And of course, I got to add, pop those bubbles. You can't have those bubbles. Um, all right, so here's the other side for the other black, or the black for the other side. It's going to be the same process. As I said, be careful of how much you add there. So you do not want to disturb. Now you may be saying, why not do this to begin with and then do the center? I've tried it and you don't get the same effect. You have to be very, very careful with this. just enough paint right now flatten this all out with this stick I'll take my time after the cameras off just know that I will be doing it and the sides I just don't want to bore you guys with that. All right. Let's 
that's that for that. That's that for that. Wow, Tammy. You have such awesome speech skills. That's that for that. I'm going to get my torch here. Now, still haven't torched the middle. And that's pretty much all it's going to do, which is plenty, believe me. here the air bubbles and as I said I'll have to fix that black when the camera is off but for now I just want you to see the beauty all right guys so here she is now there is a lot more of the background showing than I intended, that pink. But let me tell you something, I'm not changing that. I would have to be crazy to change that around. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. I'm going to straighten out that black so it's nice and flat with the stick. I'm going to take my time. And there you have it, people. A river pour. Let's get it going. I think I've had a, my fill of rings and trees and or tree ring pours cloud pours all those pours start something new this is just stunning so i hope you guys are all having a fantastic night as i said check out my amazon amazon yeah amazon <laughs> amazon shop to, that just sounded really New Englander. <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> My Amazon shop uh, for the supplies that I use. It's no extra cost to you. It does help the channel out a few cents here and there. So if you have any shopping needs, go through my link and it does help. Uh, also, another way to help is obviously PayPal, but... Watching the entire video helps tremendously and watching the ads. So if you could do that, I would appreciate it so much, guys. And last but not least, don't forget about that canvas tensioner that I'm going to link in the Amazon shop. And um, yeah, so let's get this going. River, river pour. Hashtag river pour. All right. And you guys have a great night. Happy pouring.